Okay then, so here we go. This is obviously my uh, eight foot by four foot CNC. Um, at the moment we've got a got our Chinese 2.2 kilowatt spindle on there. Um, nice little unit really. I mean, I love it. It was expensive, but worth it by far. If anybody's sitting there thinking, I'm happy with my router, should I go for a, a spindle? Should I, should I not? Is there much of a reason for to do it? Yeah. <coughs> Absolutely loads. Especially if you're gonna be running the machine for a while. Really is worth it. So this is what we're looking at. Well, this is what we got. We've got some we've got a little notch here, or we've got the main spindle body. Main spindle body is 80 mil. Um don't know if you can see, but you might be able to see just there. There is the oh where have we gone? There's the flat spots for sitting the spanner on when we're undoing the nut. Must be able to get to that, must be able to get to this. So that's the brief. That's what we're going to try and figure out. Ooh. And um, yeah, let's get on with it then. Okay, so first things first with this, we need to come up with the design. So, did what any normal person would do, we went out of Google. Now, there seems to be two or three different different designs, but they're all pretty standard. So, first one is like this. This is not what does she? It's like this, basically. So this entire section is open, so the suction comes in here, spindles here. Suction is going to have to pull this entire area, which is what I didn't want to do. We're only running off a small little siphon at the moment, powered by a Dyson, so I don't think that's going to work. You've got these ones, which are quite small. They all tend to be like rubber parts or 3D printed. I haven't got 3D printer access to rubber parts, so didn't want to go with that one. Or there's this sort of design where you have spindle in one end and then the suction coming through the other, which is what I wanted, but... I wanted to try and find one, like there's another one. This is the sort of thing that I want to go for. So it's got a small section, a small cross section here for the uh, suction to come through. I'm going to travel along here and then up the pipe work, which is perfect really for, oh, here you go, here it is. Perfect really for what we've got the set up. However, I don't have a 3D printer, so I thought, oh, but I do have a laser machine, so I thought we could maybe try and slice one up and yeah and build it ourselves, so let's have a look how we did that. Right, okay then, so this is what we're at. So obviously we started off here with a basic dust shoe shape. You can see we've got the uh, smaller side here, which is for the spindle, larger side for the dust collection. Move over, so what we've done here is we've added in um, a smaller circle and a slightly smaller circle, so this will create like a bit of a rim <coughs> for us to work off of same here and then we've just created a little notch and then so that's the notch cut out and what we're doing now is as you can see we're going through the process of how we split it into steps and how we slice through the product effectively so this is the top layer with and what we've done here is we've got a light green on here this will mean that's a vector cut for me so uh, that will do a quick cut round, but that helps me line everything up when we put it all together. And then we've got one with an empty centre, another one with an empty centre. Obviously, this will be stacked on this, which will be stacked on this. And then we need a base plate. Right here, we've got um, these. These are cut out of 12mm uh, plywood again. These will be stacked on top of each other. And that's how we will form a tube in place of uh, PVC uh, pipe. And then obviously you can see here we've got this split into two sections. So we've got the 12 mil and the 3 mil. So all of this is going to be cut out of 12 mil. All of this is going to be cut out of 3 mil. You can see here we've got some 6 mil holes uh, cut out, ready to install the small magnets. And then what we'll do is we'll use some CA glue, pop that in there, and yeah, we should be good to go. So happy days. What's been
So here we go, this is the final product. So we've got a couple of things going on with this. This bottom part, we're gonna have a brush or some uh, like freezer door fabric, if you know what I mean. That's gonna sit on here, so that'll be flexible, that'll move around with a bit. You can see we've got some neodymium magnets in here, and perfect. So the bottom of the spindle is gonna sit in here. Bottom face of the spindle, we're going to, um, the shaft is going to come out here with the two flat spots to get purchased on for changing the bits around and that. It's going to fit perfectly in there. Then we can just obviously pop this off and we want to change a bit, pop it back on. Job's good. And now we've got a couple uh, at the moment, we're using like a 43 mil hose which runs up and over into like a cyclone and then it's powered by uh, an old Dyson, right? An old vacuum cleaner which is fine for the moment, but in reality, I'm gonna to wanna to move this up to a four inch hose at some point in the future. So this fits in here and I can just take this off. And then when we do wanna use four inch hose, I can just put the four inch over the top, clamp it and we're good to go. But yeah, so the idea is, is that the that you've got this empty space in the middle there. I don't know if you can see, maybe you can see through that bit, but you've got this empty space in the middle. So the extraction is gonna be on here like that. So it's going to be sucking all the air into here and up through here. Fingers crossed it'll work, we'll see. Let's get it on the machine and give it a go, eh? I've just had a bit of a uh, kick in the teeth, but we'll figure it out. So what's happened is I've gone and put the brush bit on here and attached it to the machine and the magnets aren't strong enough, which sucks because it's all painted and pretty and sorted so i think what we're going to do is not bodge it but we're going to come up with something i think what we're going to do is maybe whether we've got the magnets on maybe take this top piece of three mil off and sort of do like a keyhole cut i could get some uh, stronger magnets that would work but if i get some stronger magnets what's going to happen is is this section here is too thin and I think because it's too thin that means we're gonna to have to do is rebuild the whole unit and I don't want to rebuild the whole unit and I don't want to wait for oh <laughs> gibbles moving around I don't want to rebuild the unit and I don't want to wait for some more uh, magnets to turn up so we're gonna try it with some keyhole fixings and to be fair if the keyhole fixings work it might be a bit easier if anybody else wants to try their own one but yeah, we'll see. I'll go run this through and we'll get it done again. Again. <laughs> the joys of prototyping, hey? The joys. Right, here we go then. Right, okay then, back to the drawing board. So I've set this up here so you can have a look and see how, just so I, how I align everything to make it perfect. 
Obviously, we've got the center circle, which is this one. We've taken this out to the center of these two lines. We've aligned these holes, which will be for the screw heads, onto the center of the lines. And then what we've done is I've started to, you know, we need to the notch out. So I've decided what the distance is between these two, which will allow for the screw shaft to go rotate in and out of here, you see. So you'll see on the next picture. Um, and then what we've done is I've picked the distance just to allow the screw head to go through and then lock in place. And that's really about it. And then once we have lined everything up and deleted every, all the bits and pieces we don't need, this is the shape we're left with. So as you can see, the screw head's gonna go in this section here and slot across, just like any normal keyhole fixing. And then with the three mil base plate, what I've done is I've redone this, stuck in some two and a half mil pilot holes, just so, and those align with these, like that. You see that? So then that way, everything lines up and everything's perfect. That's the beauty of working the laser machine. Uh, and yeah, and so this is the, um, the base section or the section that's gonna be underneath this. So this will fit on top of here like that. And what that will do is the screw head will go through here and then the screw head can move in this section while the shaft just moves in this piece here. But uh, yeah, so we'll get that cut out, put it together and give it another go. Okie dokie then, right, this is where we're at. So I've obviously taken this bottom panel off, sanded this smooth, cut another bottom panel, put this in. I made sure there was four two and a half mil holes, like little pilot holes in there. You can see these need to cut in short, but again, it's a prototype. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it if it's not gonna work. Um, and then what we've done is we've effectively done like a little keyhole. So we've cut one piece that was basically just like this okay and then the next piece we cut with these little holes and some lines in here and then that way they'll line up with the screw heads and then um, slot over but it only fits one way because as much as I tried to get it perfect it didn't necessarily work so we'll line that mark up fits in slots on I mean that's not coming out anywhere now so now we'll give it a go and see how it works Okay, cool. Let's move this out of the way then. That's what the results are. I would say that's pretty tidy. I mean, it's not perfect, is it? But, all things considered, there's no dust been kicked out anywhere else. Tiny bit over here at the back, but more to do with it coming off the edge of the board. But yeah, it works, happy days. Right then, so, worked, didn't it? I'm pretty pleased with that. A little bit myth that things went wrong, but to be fair, when you're prototyping something like this, or you're trying to build it, and it's just part of the course, it's one of those things that happens. If you like, if you're doing something like this for the first time and it screws up, don't stress about it. A lot of the times, the stuff that I put up on Instagram or the stuff that we'll do, well, whatever. A lot, of, especially the new stuff that we do for clients, we might do it two, three, four times before we get it all sorted. But I'm pretty pleased how this turned out. That's nice and tight. It's got a nice little snap action on there type thing. And I think, to be honest, that's better than the uh, better than the magnets could be. What would I do differently on it? I would probably, if you see on the video, this is obviously getting squished right down. I would probably do two or three of these, like a long, a medium, and a short one. And um, I would make this section wider here and put a wider front on it. So you can see already it snapped out when I was trying to drill the holes, but the type of fix we've got in there at the moment it seems to work and I mean if it, the beauty is if it breaks I just make another one it doesn't take long at all but uh, yeah for something that cost us I think the brush was maybe three or four quid the rest of it was free plywood because we had it on hand obviously I'm looking at the drafting machine so to do that but you could if you wanted to do this with a scroll saw a table saw bits and pieces and a bit of uh, ingenuity the hardest thing I think would be the key Key old fixings, but yeah, 
pretty pleased. I'd love to know what you think. By all means, drop us a comment below. Like, subscribe, all that sort of rubbish. But, um, but yeah, genuinely, that's I'd really love to know what you guys think to it. Whether you think I've screwed something up here, whether I've missed the trick or what. But cool. Have fun. Have a good one.